A classic fantasy novel series comes to a close. The Bear Jew takes a Louisville slugger to television. Just how ridiculous is Bane's voice? And I get all ranty on the Oscars. Coming up next on Monstrosity. Welcome to Monstrosity, a weekly show covering the news in horror, sci-fi, and fantasy. I'm your host, horror author Scott Sigler. We've got a new segment this week, Brian Brushwood and Justin Robert Young's very serious movie debate. The boys from the NSFW Show podcast discuss the legacy of Bane's voice. Watch for it at the end of the episode. Director Eli Roth is known for splatter horror flicks like Cabin Fever and Hostel. He's also the Bear Jew from the awesome Quentin Tarantino flick Inglorious Bastards. Now Roth is trying his hand at Hemlock Grove, a TV horror series based on the book of the same name written by Brian McGreevy. Hemlock Grove is a Netflix original series. All 13 episodes launch in April, so you can mainline it in one day if you so choose. It stars Famke Jansen, who played Phoenix in the X-Men movies and was the sadistic Bond girl Xena Onatop back in Goldeneye. We'll have the full trailer at the end of this episode, but for now, here's Famke eating an olive in slow motion. Ah, yeah. Everybody loves olives. One of the greatest fantasy epics of our time has finally come to a close. The novel A Memory of Light was released January 8, 2013, and is the final installment in Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time series. Originally planned as a six-book series, The Wheel of Time now spans 14 volumes in addition to a prequel novel and a companion book. Jordan began writing the series almost 30 years ago in 1984. The first book, The Eye of the World, was published in January 1990. Jordan passed away in 2007. The final three books in the series were completed by author Brand and Sanderson. Begin right. Well, the Oscar nominations are out, and once again, the Academy of Motion Pictures tells you, genre fan, that your culture is absolute crap, and you aren't smart enough to know a good movie from a bad one. Here's the list of 2012's top grossing movies, nine of which are genre flicks, and that's only if you don't count Come to Life Teddy Bears as a modern day fantasy tale. Not one of these was nominated, despite generating 3.3 billion in box office revenue from people just like you. And here's the list of movies nominated for Best Picture of 2012, which by comparison generated 620 million in revenue, one fifth as much. Should a top grossing film automatically be considered for Best Picture based on money alone? Of course not. But this year continues to illustrate that the Academy thinks they know what constitutes art, and it's a hell of a lot different than what's considered awesome by the majority of people that actually go to the movies. End rant. Earlier, did you see that cover of John Scalzi's The Human Division? Well, we will have a short and ridiculous interview with John Scalzi next week, right here on Monstrosity. Till then, I'm Scott Sigler, and buy my books, or I'll have Eli Roth take you out for a nice game of baseball. Here's that trailer for Hemlock Grove, and after that, Brian Brushwood and Justin Robert Young's extremely serious movie debate about Bane's voice. Until then, Shine like a diamond, baby. I see things sometimes. I hear these whispers. What do you think it was that brought us here? The mysteries of mortality. Something was out there. Something bad. There are things that look like you and me. Smiles, beating hearts. These things are only masks. Hiding the creature beneath. Do you see me as someone you can trust? There's this new kid. He's a gypsy. Those people are my business. Stay away from them. What are you? Something's going on here. You can't act like it's not. Run. Run before it's too late for you. Who else is gonna die? It's a 
enough to give one the shivers. I'm Justin Robert Young. I'm Brian Brushwich. Got 90 seconds. Go. Was the Bane voice really, really silly now that we've had time to digest it? Weirdly, it's the opposite, man. It's like the whole movie long, I was like, this this voice is stupid. It's all war. I can't. What did he say well, again? silly, Brian. Why can't he do it? And then it wasn't until like later that same day when I, when I found myself doing the Bane voice. That now, all of a is, sudden, it, is it that we all can do the Bane voice and we enjoy doing it and that it's a fun voice to do? I'm not sure. Why don't you explain it to me, Justin? Because initially, when, when, when people first saw it, it was A, hard to understand, and B, sounded like Elmer Fudd. And, and we were all very, very <laughs> upset by it that in a very serious universe that Christopher Nolan had painted for the Batman, that this cartoon, ridiculous voice was a part of it. Now, you saying it has been legitimized by time, not something that people five years from now will watch and be like, this is retarded. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, when you're able to do a good impression of my voice, then you have permission to love the Bane. That's that's <laughs> what it is, man. It's like it, I it's, agree. By the way, I am totally with you. I think that it it is so iconic. It has no choice but to live in our memory forever because we could do an impression of it. You're right, Brian. Yes. He's probably what? wondering why you're still doing bad impressions. Why hasn't this segment ended? <laughs> <laughs>